Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. These are just a few of the now countless streaming services on the market, all providing movies and serialized content for a monthly subscription. We're all familiar with streaming services, be it binging entire seasons of Stranger Things or watching god-awful films out of morbid curiosity. While streaming services were initially quite popular, they've become increasingly unattractive over the past few years. The sheer abundance of streaming services all trying to get your money, the ever-rising price and falling value of a subscription, along with a perceived decline in quality, are most frequently blamed for this broad unpopularity. While these aspects of the streaming industry are certainly at fault, they are a consequence of a deeper, more cancerous component of the entertainment industry and corporate America in general. Let's take a look at it. Streaming services trace their origin to a company we're now all familiar with, Netflix. Netflix was founded in 1997 and began as a rental service for the latest piece of technology and the hottest new product, DVDs. Replacing VHS tapes as the preferred format for movies and shows, DVDs had become incredibly popular in the US by the turn of the century. Netflix had the novel idea of mail renting DVDs to their customers, initially on a per-rent basis, before moving to an unlimited subscription model. The company quickly gained ground in popularity throughout the US, reaching annual DVD rentals in the hundreds of millions and achieving profitability by 2003. As internet access expanded in the aughts, Netflix would introduce video streaming in 2007, the service they're now known for. Rather than deal with the receipt and return of rental DVDs, a massive library of films and shows would now be at your digital fingertips. Streaming would soon become Netflix's top priority in delivering content to its customers, as the world at large became fully connected to the internet. Around the same time, you'd see one of the other major streaming players enter the scene, Hulu. Launched in late 2007, Hulu initially served as a subscription streaming platform offering shows from Fox, NBC, and later Disney. Hulu quickly proved successful as well. Though in possession of a smaller library, their catalog of popular content brought respectable numbers to the platform. Both Netflix and Hulu were riding high by the 2010s. They were raking in billions in profit every year and were slowly, torturously killing their primary competition, Blockbuster. Interest in these streaming platforms would only grow with the introduction of exclusive original content. Shows like House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, and The Handmaid's Tale were all acclaimed series that brought huge numbers to both platforms. The expanded collection of titles, be they recent blockbusters or in-house shows, made these streaming services must-haves for every American household. These streaming services would not be confined solely to the US either. Hulu would reach Japan in 2011, and Netflix would stretch across the world by 2016. By the late 2010s, everything seemed to be going fine. These companies were doing incredibly well, and were a popular, well-regarded business throughout the US. However, everything started to change around the turn of the decade and you began to see an explosion of smaller, more specific streaming services. Apple TV and Disney Plus in 2019, Peacock in 2020, Paramount Plus and Discovery Plus in 2021. All of these studios pulled their content from the big two, began developing their own exclusive series, and formed their own independent streaming services. This leads us to the modern era of streaming, a highly fractured media landscape, and an expensive one at that. Streaming was seemingly designed to take on cable in the entertainment space, but this brave new streaming world has degenerated into an analog of that ignoble industry. Why exactly is this? Why would they neuter this more centralized and profitable streaming system? Why would they actively hamper the service they provided to consumers? The answer is two words, exclusives and money. Netflix and Hulu essentially prove streaming as a viable business model that providing on-demand movies and shows for a monthly subscription could be profitable and successful. In addition, the exclusive content offered by both platforms proved to be a major draw and value add to the service. The many studios hosting their content on Netflix and Hulu essentially had their own library of exclusives, but they were giving them away in a sense. In spite of their multi-million dollar licensing fees through Netflix or Hulu, these studios and producers moved to host their own content on their own streaming platforms. We have a, almost a hundred years of uh, creating great content that the world loves. And I think when you start with a, a brand base that is that strong, then you're, you have an advantage basically in the marketplace. It makes a certain sense. You own the IP, so why not host it on your own terms? Why not be the direct, sole benefactor of its streaming? 
The issue at hand is that consumers were quite fond of the one-stop shop nature of Netflix and Hulu. You had two relatively inexpensive platforms with enormous libraries of content all in one place. Though a bit monopolistic, it was a reasonable business model which provided legitimately good value to its customers. While breaking up this monopoly might seem good in abstract, competition is valuable and all, what resulted was an oligopoly of inferior services. Groups like Disney and HBO knew there was demand for their content, that legions of mouth breathers would shell out the 15 bucks a month for uninspired reimaginings of beloved IPs. Why leave money on the table then? Why be a part of a system that may provide consumers a decent service if it means missing out on quarterly benchmarks? The result has been the death of these centralized, well-liked streamers, and their replacement with a number of less content-rich alternatives. In other words, to get the same variety of content at your disposal from even five years ago, you have to sign up for around four times as many services and pay at least four times the cost. It's a great system for these streamers. They found yet another way to rake in egregious profits, but for consumers, it's been anything but. The ridiculous number of streaming services at the Avail is seen as an expensive annoyance. If you use any of them, you didn't need me to tell you that. A once valuable service was just made worse, all so they could keep their stock prices up and their investors happy. I want to shift gears now and look more at the why of this streaming fragmentation, the more fundamental reason behind it all. Streaming is an extremely profitable business model. That much has been more than demonstrated. The problem with these mini corporations, however, is that they simply aren't profitable enough. How much is enough, you may ask? Well, the phrase enough profit is something of an oxymoron. To the corporate liches occupying the C-suite and the institutional investors they rub shoulders with, there is never enough profit to be had. You can't just promise handsome returns to investors either. You have to effectively ensure year-over-year -year growth, ensure constant and consistent profitability. In and of itself, this is reasonable. It's natural for a successful company to grow bigger, attain a larger market share, and post greater profits. However, you begin to run into issues when the growth of a business slows down or becomes impossible. There is an implicit assumption that the growth of a business can be infinite, despite their operation in a finite world. Ultimately, there are around 8 billion people on Earth, only 24 hours in a day, and only so many subscriptions worth your time. Netflix is beginning to run into this problematic reality. Last year, they posted the first decline of their subscriber numbers since their founding. While Netflix has been able to reverse this trend and continue racking up subscriptions, their stock price was brutalized, and the message was sent. The market for streaming is becoming more and more saturated. Netflix can no longer rely on a growing subscription base to provide financial growth. Instead, they have to turn towards their existing subscribers as their means of more reliable growth. This is to say their plan is to squeeze every last drop from their loyal customers just to keep their infinite growth fantasies alive and their stock ticker positive. You see this in their efforts to crack down on password sharing, the introduction of ads in their streaming packages, and just increasing the price of a basic subscription. No one likes these moves. They actively make the product at hand less valuable and less enjoyable. However, it's important to note actual customer satisfaction is not their objective. It never has been. Providing good services and getting happy customers is a useful means to their end of interminable growth, and dropped at the first opportunity. While Netflix is arguably at the forefront of these new anti-consumer policies, they will undoubtedly spread to the rest of their industry. Netflix has always been ahead of the curve in terms of streaming. The policies and systems they introduce are typically adopted by competing platforms in due time. The many streaming services out there will gleefully trade whatever qualities they possess for quantities of money, and this will kick into full gear when they too can't rely on natural growth. In short, the decline in quality and value of the streaming industry was a foregone conclusion. When growth and expansion were readily attainable, it was easy to provide a novel, quality service. When competition stiffens just a little, and the promise of eternal growth is threatened, any and all quality is immediately forsook for 30 pieces of silver. The slow death and decay of streaming at the hands of our corporate overlords is a shame. There's no questioning that. Fortunately, there exists a silver lining to all this, namely that the streaming industry isn't a necessity. You always have YouTube for video streaming and entertainment. The vast sea of the internet can always be sailed, and if that fails, there's always grass to touch. 
where streaming to completely nuke itself tomorrow, something that could honestly happen, reasonable and arguably better forms of entertainment could take its place. While this is some consolation, the broader, unfortunate reality is that these fundamental problems are not consigned to just the streaming industry. From groceries to clothing, from healthcare to housing, every industry in America is enthralled to the same fantasy of eternal growth, the pathological need and greed for as much money as possible. The many mega corporations we're all familiar with aren't going to get better. They have neither the incentive nor opportunity to do so. Their opportunities for expansion, both nationally and internationally, have begun to wane. New sources of wealth are slowly drying up in our increasingly globalized economy. The only option for those at the top is to turn to those at the bottom, and like the vampires they are, drain decent folk for all they're worth. This typically involves cutting all the slack in an industry, mindlessly raising prices just to profiteer, and dropping products or services that just aren't profitable enough. They'll stop producing cancer medications because they don't make enough money. They'll jack up your rent 20% because market forces or something. They'll charge you 30 bucks for eggs because fuck you. This tentacular vice grip, squeezing every last cent out of regular people, is limited not just to consumers either. For the workers of these corporations, the ones who ultimately generate value for their employers, their needs and interests are at best tertiary to those of the board in the C-suite. Wages have stagnated for literal decades. It's more important to give shareholders a fat check rather than workers. Worker benefits are constantly being slashed. They're in a necessary expense. Worker protections are constantly under assault. They make business ever so slightly more difficult. It's disgusting and anti-human on all fronts. And it's all done to enrich the already wealthy, mind you. The overwhelming majority of people must simply tolerate vital goods and services slowly getting worse coupled with less pay and harder work. And for what? So multimillionaires can purchase another gaudy McMansion? So they can buy politicians who'll push for tax cuts or foreign wars? So they can dump handles of expensive liquor just to pathetically flex their wealth? This broader system is absurd at its face, inefficient, unsustainable, nigh feudal in its ultimate distribution of power. To return to the streaming industry, its degradation and financial vampirism, while certainly disappointing, is worse a grim portent of things to come. The mega corporations undergirding our modern economy will never have their hunger, their pathological greed satiated. Their need to see a line go up will never end, and it's only a matter of time before their methods of profiteering grow ever more expensive, extractive, and egregious. Nihilism in the modern world is understandable, if not rational. The way in which our society and economy is structured is gross, unsustainable, and actively cruel. To check out, to let apathy wash over oneself, to deafen your ears and close your eyes to the miserable decay about you, who can blame? However, rather than indulge your nihilism with this video, I'd rather it stoke your anger. When honed and in moderation, anger is one of the best drivers on an individual and historical level. The abolition of slavery, the civil rights movement, the Stonewall riots, Movements all imbued with some righteous anger, and all successful, for the most part. The anger, the seething hatred for those who gleefully perpetuate injustice, catalyzed movements against them, and in turn, their downfall. The sociopaths and plutocrats at the top actively hate you. And we need to see that change. We need to see unemployment rise. Unemployment has to jump 40-50% in my view. We need to see pain in the economy, we need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. They pat themselves on the back for price gouging and scamming you. They believe your tragedies and misfortunes are ripe opportunities to extract more and more wealth from you. Also, they can burn your money on a Ferrari or weekend LARPing at Burning Man. Never forget this. Never forget the men and women that prioritize their quarterly revenue projections over the regular people they serve and the workers they rely upon. More importantly, Never forget there are means of redress for these grievances, namely through collective action. The recent resurgence in union participation is emblematic of this, that more and more people are fully acknowledging the avarice and indifference of those at the top. We're better than this. These are the best of times in the history of these companies, and these workers have created these massive profits, and they continue to be left behind and going backwards. That has to stop. Yeah. Better yet, these collective movements have proven effective. Numerous corporations and even full industries have had successful unionization efforts. Better still, these movements are popular. 
there's majority support for striking actors and auto workers in the face of their parent company's gargantuan profits. There is some hope to be had in unionization, boycotts, and collective action against corporate America. However, they can only be sustained if the disdain these corporations hold towards regular people is mirrored and amplified. So help mirror it then. Join picket lines, support businesses that actually respect their workers and consumers. Don't just tolerate an unsustainable, anti-human system when genuine solutions exist. And cancel your Netflix subscription while you're at it. Hey, thanks for reaching the end, and I hope you enjoyed this vid. The evolution of this topic throughout the video was of a more grim and political bent than my normal content, but is a subject I am deeply concerned and passionate about. To circle back to the matter of streaming, the fragmentation of the streaming world is similar to the topic of my previous vid. Much like streaming services, gaming storefronts have increased in number and dropped in quality over the past few years, save the one exception of Steam. Check it out if you want to see a similar tale, with the twist of there being one corporation which isn't an anti-consumer embarrassment. With that out of the way, shake hands with the like, hug the subscribe button, and that bell. Until next time, take care.